What single thing defines the success of your school? I think the single thing that defines the success of JAGS is the JAGS girls. The girls are fantastic. I have never worked with a better group of girls in terms of how they care for each other, how they care for the world. Uh, they're engaged, they're lively, they're bright. Um, and I think if people come here and they meet our sixth form in particular, and they see this incredibly diverse, friendly, confident, um, educated group of young women, um, they, they're very impressed by that. How do you guarantee your people's well-being? Well, you can't guarantee your pupils' well-being 100%, and if we could, that would be wonderful and we would like to. What we can guarantee is that we do all that we can to make sure that they have wonderful well-being and that they are happy and enjoying school. And you can do that through very formal framework, so we've added things like counselling, heads of year, um, and much more robust pastoral systems. It's been really useful. Um, that's all great, but the main thing, I think, is the school culture and the culture I inherited at Jags, and which I hope I'm perpetuating, is that the girls come first. If you could change one thing about your school, what would it be? I wouldn't change very much about school, because I really love it as it is. I think if I could wave a magic wand, I would make all of the girls happy and calm at all times, because they're very ambitious, and they want to get everything right. What do your people say about you, and do you care? Okay, I asked my pupils what they say about me, um, and apparently what they say is that I'm approachable and fun, which does matter, I think, because if your pupils won't talk to you, then you're going to fail because you have no idea what's going on. Um, but they also apparently say that I managed to do that without losing respect, and if that is true, then that's something I'd be very proud of. Um, and yes, it absolutely does matter. I think um, sometimes I think it matters more how you're seen by the pupils than by other members of the community, really, because you need to be their role model and you represent the school to them. Have you ever been asked to turn a blind eye by the parents, and how did you react? I can honestly say that I have never been asked to turn a blind eye by parents, either at this school or in the first school where I was head. If I were asked that question, I'd say no, because I think that would always be the wrong thing to do and it would always come back and haunt the school and the pupil and the family. How do you react to wealthy parents offering donations to the development fund before their children had enrolled in the school? Again, I've never had that happen, either at this school or my last school, that people have offered to give the school money before their children were here. I find the most generous donors tend to be either people whose daughters are at the school because they love the school and they want to give something back, and usually by that stage, the thing that they're donating to, whether it's a building or a bursary fund, is not actually going to benefit their daughters, but they believe in the school. And also, you do um, very well, I think, in terms of donations from parents whose daughters left some time ago, who are then at a different stage in their life.